friends, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing the next episode of Wrapped Up. So many of you know Wrapped Up is a series I do on my channel where I have last year's releases that I still haven't read, my 2021 releases. I have them all wrapped up and we unwrap one in a vlog and we read it together. It's essentially the premise. <laughs> Now I do let myself nowadays unwrap two if I want. If I unwrap the first one, I'm like, I don't know. I can have another go and if I'm still not feeling them, I have to read one of them. But let's just, let's just give it a go. Let's give it a go. Um, no one will understand the reference. I think I'm just special. Special. I couldn't be bothered to move them out. This is where they live. Like, and I usually move them out onto the bed to like film that clip, but I couldn't be bothered today. Like I got places to be. I, I was like, let's just sit in front of it. This is always so hard. <laughs> um, the thing is with these videos, I want something short because I always want something short, but I don't want something too short because it has to hold a vlog on its own. So I feel like this paperback looks like a good length. What do we think? Oh my God. <laughs> Let's just unwrap it. Let's just unwrap it. <gasps> okay, this is fun. This is Theatre of Marvels by, it says Leanne Dillsworth on here. I, this is an arc I got sent. I believe the finished version, it might be L.M. Dillsworth like the author name. But yeah, this came out, I think in May this month. So I'm not too late everyone. <laughs> <laughs> We're following this girl who she's in a circus theatre essentially. She finds out, I think it's set in like Victorian London, which I love. I've been craving something actually. I was watching, okay, you're gonna clown me for this. Um, uh, you guys go drag me for this, huh? Okay. I like watching Map Man or Jay Foreman. Not Map Man, he's Jay Foreman. That's his YouTube channel. I loved watching him for years and he does. So he's doing a series at the moment of bridges in London. <laughs> and I want something set in London at the time that like ships were coming in and out of the Thames and it was like London was growing. I don't think this is, this is a set bit after that, but I'm interested in London as a location at the moment. Anyway, she finds out that women like connected to the circus keep disappearing essentially and she tries to investigate it and I'm just very excited I feel like this could definitely be my kind of thing so I'm really happy we're going to be reading it because it's taken me a, a hot minute to get around to it so I'm really really excited to give this a go so yeah I'll probably read how long is my copy my copy's about 400 pages so I'll probably read the first 100 pages and then check in with you on what my initial thoughts are right <laughs> I usually film with a ring light. I haven't even got the ring light out for this clip because I'm, I'm, it, we're a hundred pages in and the car going past. I'm beyond caring. I'm be <laughs> this vlog is about to be a mess. I'm sorry in advance. I'm not enjoying this at all. Oh no, this has now gone downhill. And part of me is like Megan DNF and choose another book, but this was sent to me. I feel like I was excited to read it for such a long time. So we're gonna stick it out and we're gonna read the whole thing. Okay, I'm cutting my head off. Let's like scooch that up a bit. Okay, uh, not enjoying it. <laughs> so we are following Zilla who works as this kind of like, uh, I think her name is like the Amazonia at this circus. And she doesn't feel anything wrong with that but there's some a guy comes into her life he comes to view the show who kind of uh wants to ask her to question her playing this like savage african queen in the circus and she's like you know it's it's my life this is what i do yada yada she keeps saying to him i was born free i was born free and whenever there's like uh, black beggars and stuff that she sees in the street. She goes, well, I'm not like them. I'm not like them. She's kind of courting this rich Viscount or you know, maybe I'm just thinking that because his name's Vincent. Anyway, this rich dude. And so she's like, that ain't my life. So I already know this book is going to deal a lot with like, you know, racial identity, particularly in this time in the, in Britain when she's mixed race and she views herself as different and almost better than, you know, the people that came over as slaves and stuff like that. But the thing I'm not enjoying about it is her voice. It's very voicey. What am I, th like the maid was very voicey that I read lately. There's, there's something I read lately 
Oh my daggers, how dare you drive your car in the street. Yeah, I feel very attacked! Relax. Something I read lately that I didn't like that was voicey. Because it was voicey, but I can't remember what. Like, where you're really in this protagonist's head. Is my mic on? Yeah. <laughs> really in this protagonist's head. And all of what moves the plot along is, like, their hopes and desires and opinions. There's not much, like inciting incidents or if they are it's all to do with what they're gonna think about it and what they feel and she just strikes me as like the best way i can describe it is head in the clouds like <laughs> it's reading as young Why? but also <laughs> things are happening in it like her and her and her guy are getting it on getting it on and but i mean it's not like on page but it's like you know, we got into bed naked and after we made love and all this stuff. There's just parts of it that aren't gelling for me. If it's reading young, like for 13 year olds, in my opinion, you wouldn't expect that to be in there. I felt like from like a writer publisher point of view. She's just like so <laughs> naive for the betterment of the plot, like to allow the plot to do what the author wants it to do. And I hate that in books. I hate when they're like oblivious, like, oh, Oh, thinking in a way with no nuanced thought like a human being would. I don't think I really like dumb. <laughs> I'm not like calling her dumb. I don't want. I don't want to to uh, correlate mixed feelings with being, you know, part of a black diaspora and um, the situations around her. Her black identity with her being dumb. Not correlating that. I'm correlating it with her like work perspective. Her perspective with this guy. Just like everything. And the way she speaks is just very naive. And I'm just... <laughs> I'm already not enjoying it. So yeah, that's a great, great update. I'm just going to try and read it as quickly as possible because I want June to be a great reading month and just to read loads. And I feel like I need to love reading, you know? I Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. And I should because I love the kind of Victorian London setting, the fact that it's subverting a lot of the issues we often see discussed. But um, my gal is annoying me. She's annoying me. I'm gonna try and read maybe like another 150 pages and then I'll get back to you about what my new thoughts are. <laughs> I don't even want to talk. <laughs> I really dislike this book. Like, I, I really dislike it, predominantly how it's written. And here's the thing, I'm sitting here and I'm reading the book, right? <sighs> the hair. Um, <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, like, I don't want to rag on this book. I don't want to shit on this book, right? It's, you know, a debut woman of colour author writing about mixed race identity and black identity in this time period and I don't want to shit on it but I don't enjoy it so like <laughs> do you want me to come out there and lie and you know if it was in a multiple book vlog I could maybe like gloss over my thoughts on it not gloss over but like not highlight them as much but this is this vlog is it so like what am I supposed to do <laughs> it reminds me a lot of a book I read called uh I didn't even read it I DNF'd it like 50 pages in The Court of Miracles by Kester Grant where the writing just reads so dumbed down like so dumbed down <sighs> here's the thing right in the back it's compared to fans to authors sorry Jesse Burton Bridget Collins Stacey Halls who are all adult historical fiction authors so I feel like this is sp <laughs> it's supposed to be an adult but it reads like young YA but with speaking of like essay and uh you know <laughs> adult matters happening in this book I'm gonna look on Waterstones and see what it's shelved as fiction general fiction is it 
an adult book? It's a conspiracy theory that I'm actually interested in. It's gotten so many good reviews though. So like, is it just me? <laughs> Let me look at a YA book. Let's look at Shadow and Bone. Yeah, it would show us like children's teen and YA if it was YA. This is adult. Is it? What? <laughs> I, I don't understand what's going on. I truly do not understand what is going on. Uh, I just... <laughs> it was pitched as well as a woman goes missing in London and our protagonist wants to get to the, the bottom of it. But she hasn't, right? She meets... She works at the circus. The owner of the circus wants to show this new exhibit and it's a woman. I won't get into what it is for spoilers, but it's a woman. And she wants to speak to the woman and find out more about her. And she just doesn't know where the woman is, like is living. So she's not missing. <laughs> Girlie just doesn't know where she is. And so I thought it'd be more, I thought a woman was killed. And I thought it was like solving murders of, of girls in these positions, like of positions of, of poverty or of uh, lack of uh, social standing who were kind of getting killed. As like when uh, Jack the Ripper's victims were killed, everyone was just like, oh, they're prostitutes, you know, when they weren't. Read The Five by Hallie Rubenhold. Check the facts, receipts, America. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was going to be about that, but it's not. Like, she's just like, there's some shady shit going on and she's going to uncover it. But like, it's not that deep a mystery because she's like, I just want to know where this, where this girly is. I want to know where my mate is. But like, whatever, whatever. <laughs> On that breaking point. The examination, I will say, like I said, of mixed race identity, the examination of her saying, I, you know, her examination of being born free is very interesting of how she's having to unpack how for many years she viewed herself as better because her mum instilled in her that you were, she was born free and how she thought that made herself better than um, slaves or ex-slaves is interesting. I would say that's probably the most interesting part of the book. There's interesting themes being examined in this, but I'm just not enjoying the process or the writing or the character or any of that. I also think like the characters in it are very predictable, very, you know, you know what purpose they're going to serve in the story when they, when they come into it. Like she's got a thing with this is why I count who I mentioned, and you know how that's gonna turn out. She meets this other man, and you know how that's gonna turn out. Like, it's all just so predictable for me. She, this is my number one thing. <laughs> my number one thing that I hate about books, she trusts characters that she barely knows to help her to, with important information that could like ruin her life if it gets out she's going to them, when the stakes aren't high enough to justify that. I hate in books when Things that aren't realistic or haven't haven't been set up, right? The foundation for that has not been laid. You can't, it's like in law, you can't give me that argument, you can't give me that plot line if you haven't laid the foundation. The stakes are not high enough for her to risk everything by going to these people. She's just like, oh, I don't know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really nervous about doing this, but let's just do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, like it's super voicey. It's filled with over dramatic statements where she's like, little did they know, or I knew this was the moment and I, whatever. Like it's just pissing me off. I'm sorry. And I don't want to say this. I don't want to be shitting on this book. Like I said, for the reasons I said, um, and it's had pretty good reviews on Goodreads. I looked and there wasn't many negative reviews. So maybe it's just me. I don't know. But, um, I really don't like it. <laughs> this is where my blood starts to boil. Oh, boil. At the moment, it's like a two. It won't get a one because it's not offensive. To, I only really give ones to books that are like offensive to me or like I feel no qualms about giving a one. But you know, morally, morally, I don't want to give this a one. Maybe a 1.5 because I gave the Gilded Ones a 1.5 and I feel similar. This one perhaps is even more egregious because it reads like it's written for 14, 13 year olds when it's being shelved by Waterstones as an adult book and being comped to adult authors. So what's the sitch? You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go finish this tonight. Hopefully I wanna just get it, you know, one and done. I want it out of my life. I'm barely reading it. I mean, I'm playing 2048 whilst I listen to the audiobook really fast. By the way, I just want you all to know, does anyone remember the game 2048? I'll put the, the logo in. I'm in the top 8% in the world ever at that game. I got the 4096, 4096, I think, tile. I'm elite. 
So at least this book is helping me get my training in. We must be grateful for small mercies. <laughs> just as I have literally started filming, just as I set my ring light up, my next door neighbors <laughs> started playing music really loudly. So if you can hear that. <laughs> I can't wait to film because it's half five. This video is supposed to go up tonight. So <laughs> in like two hours. So I can't even just like wait to film because I need to film this straight away so I can edit this. Anyway, I finished Theatre of Marvels right at the last minute. But um, also, hang on, I've edited the rest of this video. I kept calling it a circus. It's not, I knew it wasn't a circus. I don't know why that was coming out of my mouth. Uh, the clues in her name again, theatre. <laughs> dum dum. I think I was thinking of Circus of Wonders, Theatre of Marvel, Circus of Wonders, um, and they're very similar, you know, Victorian. I'm gonna give it a one and a half star. I feel terrible. I feel sick to my core. I feel evil. I am sorry, right? I'm really sorry. I'm sorry to the publisher who sent me this book, but I'm not about to lie. <laughs> I will say I found the topic interesting. I have personally always found the lives of black people in Victorian England a very interesting topic. I think it's something that's often glossed over or just the history of black people in Britain, you know, all the way into Tudor times. King Henry VIII, this is off topic, but King Henry VIII had like a trumpeteer who was quite prominent who was black. So um, it's a topic I find really interesting, but I just could not get over the writing. I just didn't like the writing. And it's had good reviews, but me and it weren't rubbing right. <laughs> we weren't getting along and I'm sorry for that I'm sorry I apologize everyone I'm sorry but it wasn't for me I don't have much else to say to you that hasn't already been said my feelings in this last part were pretty much the same I feel like everything was too convenient once again there's like insta love in this I actually laughed out loud I was doing my makeup listening to your book and I went <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck? But then it tries to be like, I'm not like other Insta loves. Mm, I'm different. I'm not like other Insta loves. And I kind of just left the book feeling like I didn't have much resolution and not much happened. And like, what was all of this? I actually read all these words on pages, but like, what were those words? <laughs> So I personally don't recommend it, but like I said, there's been good reviews, so like maybe I'm just the outlier. I don't know, there's a lot of interesting thematic elements, but the plot and the writing itself didn't vibe with me. We clashed, girly, we clashed. We weren't busy mates, we clashed. So, that brings us to the end of this vlog. I'm like depressed. This vlog has been like, oh yeah, I hate it. Like and I couldn't even like tear it apart with something like su like Survive the Night we had as a wrapped up book. And I feel like I could really rip into that because Riley Sager's fair game. Do you know what I mean? Like fair game. But this is a, you know, debut author and I just feel horrible. I feel like the worst person in existence. So, um, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video, the vlog anyway. If you've gotten to the end, comment the dress emojis. A lot of mentions of dresses and petticoats and outfits in this book. So comment that down below if you got to the end. Thank you so much for watching. I love ya. And I'll see you soon. Love ya. <laughs> love ya. Um, I love you very much. And I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.